Welcome back to On Fire Television. It's your man, Diamond K. Thank you for joining me. Here on the program, we deliver the biggest political and trending news stories of the day with interviews and original reporting from across this country, emanating from our studios in Baltimore and Atlanta. The show is fun, the show is upbeat, but I also want to expose what is really going on in this country. Radio on Fire is Black Voices giving you the American story. New episodes of the Diamond K Show drop Monday through Friday, 8 a.m., but I don't want you to miss any of our live broadcasts. In addition to our 8 a.m. program, we drop content throughout the day as news happens. Hit that notification bell so you get an alert whenever we go live. So the trial has come and gone, Kyle Rittenhouse, and the deliberation, deliberations, Went on all day. There has not been a uh, (laughs) verdict yet. So, of course, what are we talking about? We're talking about whether or not Kyle Rittenhouse, the now 18-year-old, was the instigator in a night of death and bloodshed in Kenosha, Wisconsin. Or, as uh, the defense would like you to believe he's just a concerned citizen who came under attack while trying to protect property. That's how they're trying to pitch this accused murderer. Trying to pitch him as a concerned citizen. Are you buying it? I'm not buying it. I I never bought it from the beginning. I I did not believe the story that they were trying to sell. Not for a minute. The case, the murder case, has gone to an anonymous jury. So in a very unusual move, the judge, who has been so so, uh, uh, very sympathetic to the defendant, I've never seen a judge this sympathetic to a defendant. Are they related? Well, what is going on here? Right in front of the American people. I mean, they're not even trying to hide it. And if you feel or detect in my voice the fact that I think I know where this is headed, you're absolutely right. The judge has been outrageous outrageously sympathetic to the accused murderer. Oh, you never see that, right? So the case goes to this anonymous jury. And the judge allows Rittenhouse himself, the accused murderer, to play a minor role. It's a minor role in the selection of the final panel of 12. So, of course, everybody heard the the case. And the job of this jury is to decide the fate of Kyle Rittenhouse. So the judge, who, as I said, has been very, uh, uh, very partial, very, very partial to Kyle Rittenhouse, The judge has him making the selection. What do I mean? Kyle Rittenhouse reached into a raffle, you know, drum, drew numbers, and this determined which of the 18 jurors who sat through the whole case would actually deliberate and which ones would be dismissed as alternates. Now, you may be saying, what in the, What are you talking about? Yes, that is, that is what the judge did. That is what the judge did. And this task usually is performed by a court clerk, not the defendant. But, hey, usually the judge doesn't have the defendant over Thanksgiving, and I'm not sure that that's not going to happen. So the judge claims uh, later on that he has been having defendants do this for 20 years, at least. That's what he said. Jury's going to return tomorrow morning 
to continue its work. Hopefully, a miracle happens and justice is served. Why do I say that? Clearly, this kid went there looking for trouble. You're not from there. You don't live there. You didn't grow up there. He went there looking for trouble. And to somebody with a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Rittenhouse is facing life in prison if convicted as charged. Used his AR style semi automatic weapon to kill two men and wound a third during this infamous night of protests. These protests were against racial injustice in Kenosha last summer, well, summer of 2020. So he testified, Rittenhouse testified, this is self-defense. It, it's self-defense, right? That, that's, that's, he tried to testify that it is self-defense. This was provoked violence. He went there for this. He wasn't in his house and these guys came at him. He went there, not, not downtown, not around the corner, not on his way to the store. He went to a whole nother city. In a whole nother state. This is a debate about so many things. Racial justice protests, vigilantism, law and order, guns. I mean, <laughs> child endangerment. I mean, it should charge his mother with something. Jury is overwhelmingly white. No surprise there. Judges as white as they come. Prospective jurors were not asked to identify their race during the selection process. And the court, obviously, is not going to provide a racial breakdown. As this jury deliberated, there were dozens of protesters, some for Rittenhouse, some against outside of the courtroom. Some talked quietly. Some shouted. You know, um, it, it's just it's just a reflection of where we are in this country right now. Regardless of this outcome, I hope that there is uh, an understanding of the bigger issues that are on display here with this case. Rittenhouse was 17 years old when he went to Kenosha from his home in Antioch, Illinois. He says that it was an effort to protect property from rioters in the days after Jacob Blake was shot by a white Kenosha police officer. There's a lot of things going on here. But a lot of things going on here. Uh, this case, it, it seems like just yesterday that this even happened, what we're talking about last summer. So I did not expect the jury to come back with the verdict the first day. I am expecting it to come tomorrow, though. What's going to be the result? I don't know. Is this the face of a guilty man? Oh, yeah, he's guilty, right? But what is he guilty of? Is he guilty of self-defense? I mean, is that even a crime? It's, it's, it's so amazing that the word self-defense is just being thrown around like this. So, you know, I, I talked about this with my father. And, you know, he's a he's a, a lot more radical than me. Right? He's a lot more radical than me. Uh, but self-defense definition. Self-defense is a countermeasure. A countermeasure that involves defending the health and well-being 
of one's self from harm. If you are the initiator, if you started the thing, if you took it to the next level, can you then claim self-defense? So the use of the right of self-defense as a legal justification for the use of force in times of danger is available in many jurisdictions. So let's say this, because it's complicated. Let's say that you're in a crowd of people and a man shoots and kills one person. But you're in a crowd of people. Now the person with the gun starts walking towards you, right? You're being approached by a person with a gun who just shot and killed someone. Now they're approaching you. If you try to take the gun from the person or you try to fight with the person and that person shoots and kills you, the self-defense, Where? so the only person that has self-defense is the person with the gun? What about the person who is being approached by the person with the gun who just killed someone? Where's their self-defense line? Oh, they can't defend themselves. You have a gun. You just killed, shot and killed someone, right? Uh, so these are some of the complexities that, that uh, this case involved. You know, these are some of the of the complexities. But self-defense. Was it a clear case of self-defense? Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Uh, now. The fact is the fact. Self-defense as a definition. So we saw closing arguments. We saw a trial. We saw insincere attempts to cry. I mean, why even do it? No tears came out. He, he, he tried his best. He scrunched his face up. He did all of this. And for what? What was even the purpose of that? The people that believe Kyle Rittenhouse or believe the story that he is now telling, because he said something different at the time, but the story that he's now telling, the people that believe that, they didn't need to see the, the uh, uh, awkward display or attempt to cry. They didn't need to see that. They're already on his side. The people who saw it and who are, who don't believe Kyle Rittenhouse, they weren't convinced by the mockery of a, an attempt to cry. It was no purpose for it. The people that supported him still support him, even though, you know, whatever he cried. Still, it, it didn't change anything. It didn't change anything. The verdict, the verdict is going to hinge on Wisconsin's self-defense law. And I do not have a lot of faith in that. The judge threw out the gun charge. Yeah, that shows you how flimsy Wisconsin's laws can be. Judge threw it out because he said, oh, it could be confusing for people confusing can you imagine a judge just throwing out a gun <laughs> no, the, the gun i mean he killed two people wounded another and throwing it out it's confusing <laughs> it, it's it's uh you know if we weren't watching it happen and it was in a movie we would say this is unbelievable this isn't realistic but it is Friends, it is happening. It is happening. And the opposition of truth, the opposition of justice is making an attempt to pull a fast one over on the people. Rittenhouse, of course, pleaded not guilty, testified that he acted in self-defense, is facing life. That's not what's going to happen. Let's be clear. 
if Kyle Rittenhouse was a black guy, oh, this, everything would be flip flop. Hold on. the judge would not be supportive, first of all. But Kyle Rittenhouse is a white, white guy. And 18 years old, he's an adult, was it was a 17 years old at the time. He brought a semi-automatic weapon to a protest. For what purpose? To menace. To menace. After the shooting, after the killing, he walked off like a, a, a hero in a Western, prosecutor said. Walked off like a hero in a Western. Yeah. Rittenhouse's lawyer countered that, right? Prosecutor said that, hero in the Western. And what is interesting about that is it points directly to the sediment that some people champion the actions of Kyle Rittenhouse. Some people think that he's some kind of hero. They do. They helped raise money for his defense. When he uh, free Kyle Rittenhouse, like there was this whole thing. That is the mindset. The prosecutor said this. That is the mindset of some people. He walked off like a hero in a Western. Now, Rittenhouse's lawyer countered that argument, saying that the shooting started after the young man was ambushed by a crazy person. This 17-year-old goes to a, a whole nother state with a with a gun that has an open carry state, right? And then it's it's so ironic that the folks with the guns are the most scared. He has a gun, he's scared of folks that don't have a gun. Now, did he shoot to injure? No, he shot to kill. 17 years old. And you know, it is, it, it really has been a bitter debate in this country over racial tensions, over guns, over so-called, so-called law and order. But let's, let's understand this. You cannot hide behind self-defense if you are the one who provoked the incident. Let me say that again. You cannot hide behind self-defense. You can't claim victim if you were the initiator. The defendant, Kyle Rittenhouse, provoked everything. He should not have been there. He should not have been there armed. He lied numerous times. Talking about he had medic, he was a medic. He's there to protect some property. The owner of the property said otherwise. Mandatory sentence of life in prison if convicted of the most serious charges against him. First degree intentional homicide, which is Wisconsin's top murder charge. I don't predict that he's going to get that. I think he's going to skate right past that. I think he's going to skate skate right past that. I think that we can agree. I think that we can agree that we should not have 17-year-olds running around any street in this country with an AR-15 because this is the kind of stuff that's going to happen. The most pro gun rights advocate. I think we can agree that we do not want 17 year olds running around with AR 15 style weapons. No? So I, I just. You know, it is really, it is it is really maddening when you look at the the facts of this case. 
Was Rittenhouse's behavior protected under the law of Wisconsin, the law of self-defense? All indicators, everything in me says yes. Says yes. The judge is signaling the direction that this is going to go in. The judge is signaling it. The prosecutor referred to Rittenhouse as an active shooter. An active shooter. I mean, this is what a shooter looks like when, when someone is at a school shooting. This is what it is. Someone with the gun goes there not and, and starts unloading, right? So jury deliberated Tuesday. They're going to be back in the morning. I'm predicting that tomorrow we have a verdict. I don't think that anybody's going to be happy with anything that happens. If he's guilty, you're going to have folks that are mad. If he's found guilty. If he's acquitted, you're going to have folks that are mad. If he is acquitted, is there going to be trouble in Kenosha? I hope not. I hope not. And I, I really, I really and truly hope not, but I don't know. And I do know that the city is prepared or preparing. But make no mistake about it, Kyle Rittenhouse is no hero. But he is facing this deliberation. An open carry state. We really, we really need to pay serious attention to the increased prevalence of open carried rifles. We do. This is a serious thing. He's a child. I just, I don't understand how. In good conscience, self-defense is the claim. Did Rittenhouse's lawyers do enough to win the case? Did the prosecutors do enough? The burden of proof is on the prosecution. The bar that they have to meet is very high. The defense has a few things in their advantage, uh, working in their favor. You got a sympathetic, sympathetic judge. You got an all white jury. You got some, you know, white teenager. And you have some dead folks that, for all intents and purposes, are supporting racial justice, aka black people. So you have obvious. Uh, uh, you know, disagreements, ideology, differences. You have some white people that seemingly were supporting black people. Now, two of them were killed, one of them injured by this out-of-towner who claims self-defense. There's a clear message being sent here. The message seemingly, obviously, I don't see how you can see it any other way, is that some white people are trying to send a message to some other white people that say, if you support racial justice for black people in this country, well, we'll shoot and kill you too. That's just what it feels like. It's a terrible thing. Tomorrow, we are going to get a verdict. I predict, I predict that we're going to get a verdict. Guilty, I say. Self-defense? I don't know. Wisconsin is a, is, is a wild place. See some of these comments. 
unapologetically black says, I hope he's guilty, but he's protected by WS. Also says he's cocky while on the stand because he's been told that he would win. Yeah, somebody, somebody told him something. He's definitely cocky. He's definitely cocky and, and arrogant, and it's disgusting. It's disgusting. It, yeah, it's, it, it's, it, it's just disgusting. So I've been watching the trial, and conservatives obviously support him. Uh, and um, uh, for the most part, I don't, I don't, I don't want to say all. Um, but when the judge dismissed the weapons charge at the murder trial, I, I mean, that was just another, what they call the dog whistle. That was just another uh, uh, a thing that sent a signal to Rittenhouse that you know, everything's going to be all right. Everything's going to be all right for him. The defense argued that Wisconsin's stature had an exception that could be read to clear Rittenhouse. And that ex exception involved whether or not a rifle or shotgun is short-barreled. Anybody who knows anything about guns knows the answer to that. But, you know, the judge, giving the defense what they want, <laughs> like I said, he's probably, he's probably going over for Thanksgiving dinner. This, this is going to be wrapped up before Thanksgiving. This is going to be wrapped up before Thanksgiving, and, you know, tomorrow we're going to talk about another trial that's going on. Another trial where race is in the forefront. No way around it. There's no, there's, there's no way that you can uh, uh, skate past it because it is clear and it is obvious. And we're going to talk about that tomorrow. And, of course, that trial is happening in Georgia. The verdict is near. Governor Tony Evers said that 500 National Guard members, 500, are going to be prepared for duty in Kenosha if law enforcement requests them. So he's trying to let folks know we're going to be ready, and he should be ready because uh, tensions are high. I don't want to see anybody else hurt. But tensions, tensions are definitely hot. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, TikTok, at the Diamond K Show, at Radio on Fire. And, of course, the Diamond K Show is an on-fire television production. You can get the show on demand at WRF Radio, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, and, of course, YouTube.com slash DJ Diamond K here at the Diamond K Show. We're very excited about the WRF Radio app. You can take a moment to download WRF Radio in your app stores. Leave me a comment. Scroll your timeline. Attend a Zoom meeting on mute. Do some online shopping all while listening to the Diamond K Show. I will be back tomorrow. And hopefully we will have the answer to this trial tomorrow.